InfoSec and Cyborg Hacks are here to help you pass the Security Plus exam. For today's hack, let's talk about boot camps. If you've been piecing your way through the Sec Plus study guide for six months or more on your own, it's possible that you would learn better in a concentrated, focused environment with expert instructions. And I'm talking, of course, about InfoSec boot camp instructor Tommy Gober. Tommy will walk you through the InfoSec Five Day Security Plus boot camp, what it's like, the learning and memorizing strategies you'll employ and all the ways that boot camp training can make the difference between passing on the first try and endless headaches and heartaches of resetting the exam. You don't have to do it alone, but to learn more, you do have to keep it here for another CyberWork Hack. Welcome to a new episode of CyberWork Hacks. The purpose of this spinoff of our popular CyberWork podcast is to take a single fundamental question and give you a quick, clear, and actionable solution or a new insight into how to utilize InfoSec products and training to achieve your work and career goals. Uh, today, we're going to be doing just that. Tommy Gober is an InfoSec instructor, and among his very, very uh, many areas of expertise, he is our boot camp instructor for one of the most popular and in-demand certifications, and that, of course, is CompTIA's Security Plus certification. So for today's CyberWork Hack, Tommy is going to take you on a little guided tour of what it's like to take a certification boot camp specifically with him. So thanks for joining me today, Tommy. Thanks for having me. Uh, so, Tommy, to get everyone on the same page, can you briefly explain the difference in boot camp training for a certification exam versus the other common approaches like academic class or self-study? Yeah. So, um, first of all, let me let me say, too, that I've I've done them all. Um, I have studied on my own. Um, I have taught academic classes for, um, you know, college here by me um, and then, of course, doing the boot camps. And so they each have their um they, they each have their own way of, you know, experiences, I should say. Yeah. So with, when it comes to, um, to a boot camp, and, and I, I was joking with you before we, uh, for, you know, when we were talking before, I should have got like a campaign cover, like a drill sergeant. You know. <laughs> yes, um, absolutely. It's not, it's not like a boot camp like that, but right. um, your brain definitely gets a workout. Um, mm. throughout the, the boot camp, It is like drinking from the fire hose. Um, right. There is a lot, a lot, a lot of information to process in a very compressed window of time. And so you have to bring your A game whenever you are uh, participating in a boot camp. It's not a passive experience. Um, we do have folks that go through and this and be like, okay, I'm just going to veg on the couch and eat ding dongs all day. And, you know, I'm just going to like, you know, absorb and listen to this guy. Yak at me. Step, it, step three, question mark, question mark, step, question mark, step four <laughs> certification. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, you have, you have to participate. You have to yep. uh, engage with this. It's not like you just have to it running in the background. Um, you know, what, what were those old uh, language learning tapes you'd like put the speaker under your pillow at night yeah. and still learn. It's not yeah. going to happen for learn you. Learn by osmosis. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah. So, so we, uh, you know, it's, it's a, a long week at the end of the week. A lot of folks are just like, my brain is shot. Mm -hmm. Um, when I do these face to face with folks, I'm, I'm like, I kind of walk around jokingly at the end of the day and I put my hands over everyone's head. I'm like, well, I can feel the heat coming off of your brain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you hear and, the whine of the motors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the, the smoke's coming. <laughs> right. So there, there's a lot to, to process in a short amount of time. That said, mm -hmm. we can still get you over the hump of being successful on the exam um, in a compressed window of time. That is different than an academic class you were to take at a community college um, or in a semester long course or something. In those, you're going to get to get be able to steep in the content a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. And so some of the concepts are going to um, be locked into your brain longer. So you're gonna have a, a, a more of a deep dive into some of these concepts. Because think about it, if, if I can do it in about five days, if we can go through all this content, but then we're going to spend an entire college semester mm -hmm. or quarter on just this one topic, there's more a lot, time. A lot more give and take going on, I imagine. A lot more que leisurely questions and answers. And yeah. Yeah. And so it the 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 drawback to that approach is of course time mm -hmm. and the the time commitment that you've got. Um, the amount of time you your employer might have you, you know, hey, every day I gotta let this person go so they can go sit in this one class for a, an afternoon or something mm -hmm. um, and do that for several months. That that's just not gonna work for some folks. 
The other problem is that you might get to the end of the semester and you've forgotten what you talked about back at the beginning of the semester. And then yeah. suddenly you've got five questions in the exam about that. That's a, that's a difficulty too. Mm -hmm. And then uh, one that I've seen reflected online, a lot of folks will ask this one, or they, did, they discuss their experience of self-study. Self-study, completely doable. Plenty of folks do it, but you have to be honest with yourself. You have to be a disciplined learner. And let's face it, how many of us really, truly are disciplined enough to sit down and, you know, yeah, burn through this thing. Um, and so I just re recently read a, a report. Somebody said that they failed the exam for the, the third time. Um, mm -hmm. This is like on Reddit, I think something. And someone said they failed the exam for the third time. They'd spent three months studying serious study, eight hours a day. And I'm like, eight hours a day for three months? Like, what? you had to have run out of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What, what is that exactly? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's way too much time. Um, and so, you know, how much disciplined learning is going on with self study? A lot of times people say they get, they're studying and the book is just sitting next to them while they're, you know, right. Watching Christmas yeah. videos. Yeah, exactly. Oh, back, maximum respect to anyone who actually, uh, can, can do that. I've been sitting, uh, you know, I've been using my, uh, my A plus practice, uh, exam guide for a, for a seat cushion for a while now. And one of these <laughs> days I'll get past page, you know, 300 or whatever, but, uh, uh yeah. so yeah, so yeah, there's, there's definitely, uh, uh upsides to all of those, but I want to definitely uh, focus in on, uh, the bootcamp experience. So you mm -hmm. said, um, security plus is five days, right? Can you give us a sense of the schedule for each of those days? Like how much of each day is spent on different domains of the exam and, and, and what, what you'll, what you'll be learning? Yeah. So we, we have a little bit of variation in scheduling for each instructor. We have a, a team of instructors, right? Um, I'm just one of, um, a crew of very talented other instructors. We each have our own take on what works best. Um, and, and our own presentational instructional styles. So my personal uh, structure is we go 8.30 a.m. until mm, maybe about four o'clock um, in yeah. the afternoon. Validate. And so it, it's, it's a full day. Um, yeah. We take a, I take a healthy one hour lunch you know, right in the middle. I mean, a lot of folks are, you know, maybe their boss gave them the day off or that week off. They're going to stay at home or maybe you work from home anyway. So you can just walk in the kitchen and get your, but if, you know, so other people are connecting from the office or whatever. So we get a, a one hour break for lunch. Uh, we have a morning and an afternoon break uh, built in as well. And I say that we wrap up at four o'clock each day, but we actually run until about 430 at the end of the day, um, at, from between four and four thirty, we do some uh, practice questions together as a group. Okay. So I'm walking folks through, looking at a, at a question. We had a uh, a previous video, remember, um, where we went through some of the questions. Yes, um, right. With us, definitely. Folks so check that out. Yeah. So there's a there's a plug for that. Yeah. So we go through some of those questions. That's actually where I, I pulled those questions for you. We go through those and we talk about why is this the correct answer? When did we talk about this topic? Um, what are they asking, et cetera? So we unpack what those questions are. We do that for the last 30 minutes of each day doing some test prep. The um, the content though runs from about 8.30 to four o'clock each day. And um, we generally, if we're moving at a good clip, we can usually finish uh, about, about lunchtime on Friday. I've actually had some people go and sit for the exam on Friday afternoon. Um, while it's all fresh on their minds, but mm -hmm. I usually tell folks, I'm like, oh, kind of, you know, wait till Monday, Tuesday, let your brain cool down and let some okay. of this stuff lock good, in. Good, good advice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, what is, what is the communication like in these boot camps? Like you, you basically mentioned some people were from home, some people are in, uh, you know, in, in office or whatever, but you know, pre COVID, especially we, we, a lot of people thought of boot camp classes as something where everyone flew to a site and barricaded themselves in a hotel conference center <laughs> and sweated it all out together. So, uh, but these days boot camps are more flexible uh, with remote learning. And, and so I'm wondering how your classes manage to retain this type of communication during the class when people are coming in from all these different places. That is a great question. So yeah, we've got uh, we've got two different modalities that we do, right? We do the face to face still. We still go and and hole up in a hotel, um, and uh, you know everybody kind of parks it. There is still value in that. You might be like, I don't want to pay for my folks to go and sit through one of these boot camps face to face. But you know what it does is it forces these folks to commit to yeah. learning. Wow. There's they're free of distractions. We are all there. I'm getting body language. You know, I, I'm getting feedback from folks. It's a very, very rich 
learning environment. So mm -hmm. I would say first and foremost, the best boot camp would be the one that's face to face. Barring that, though, we can do online. The way the that the online uh, boot camps work, um, I'm I'm here, uh, you know, on screen just like this, and folks are connected via Zoom. Um, cameras off. We don't really want to see, you know, <laughs> somebody walking around their bathrobe behind you or whatever. <laughs> right, right. Uh, and most folks are, you know, we, we we stay muted throughout the week so that there's there's free of distractions. We have people chewing Fritos in their microphone and stuff. Yeah. Um, so we, we stay muted that way. But come off of mute at any point. Ask me questions. Um, give a feedback. And so it becomes all about this kind of discourse. Um, okay. I didn't mention this one earlier, Chris, but my my formal schooling is in education. Mm -hmm. And there's an education theorist, Jean Piaget, who said that learning happens in the discourse. Yes. And it's in the exchange, the back and forth that we've got where that happens. So like I mentioned earlier, like if, if somebody's just sitting there idle, trying to passively learn this, it's not going to happen for them. It's whenever you're come out, coming off of mute, asking questions, saying like, oh, that's like this. That's like this. That's oh, I've seen this. You're You're helping others learn. You're learning that yourself. And so it becomes this very open collaborative form of communication. Uh, a lot of times folks are, don't really feel comfortable with coming off of mute. So they're just going to, you know, put their questions in chat. Okay. I keep an eye out for that too. So all, all do you, modes. Do are, you are get there. kind of like hubbubs of, of like students talking to each other through the zoom as well, or do they, is it all kind of focused toward you and then you sort of refract it back? Uh, sometimes they're, they're going back and forth, especially if there's like a major sporting event going on oh, during sure. the week. Yeah. Of... <laughs> right. right. So, oh, unrelated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we get some, some back and forth there. Um, we have a lot of service members that will come through. And so um, we get the, the uh, inter-service uh, ribbing that goes on back and forth. Ah, so there's a lot yeah. of fun banter that, yeah. that goes on. Um, we, we generally, you know, everybody stays professional though. We, we, keep moving ahead, but we have fun with it throughout the week. One of the things that I actually really, really enjoy about my job is that we come out every week. We have some kind of like inside joke that kind of percolates up. Yes. Right. Right. And so by the end of the week, we're all, we kind of have this gag that, and, I, and I'm usually trying to find a way to like weave that back into the, whatever we're talking about. So yeah, we have fun with it. Love it. Uh, so what is exam day like exactly? Uh, you, you mentioned uh, maybe waiting, you know, the weekend to sort of cool your brain down or whatever. But like, mm -hmm. what does the boot camp do to help everyone take their running leap into the exam with a clear head? And 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 once you've taken the exam, when do you find out how how you did or if you passed? Oh, I, I can tackle that one quick. The so you find out with the, with the CompTIA Security Plus exam before you even leave your seat. It tells you right there on the screen. Congratulations, you passed. Okay, this is the this is the score you needed. This is what you got. Way to mm -hmm. go! Um, and when you go to uh, to sit for the exam, um, if we're if we're doing it like a, a a live in person, you know, we're taking over the hotel conference room. We uh, at Infosec we do provide sit down testing services right there. Right. So before your folks even leave the hotel, mm -hmm. the, you know, they're they're getting uh, they're Take walking. The leave. With yep. Yep. Um, but the 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 when you're going to sit for the exam, uh, there's two different modalities you've got. You can do it online or you can do it in person at a test center somewhere. If you're in a major metro area, there's a test center near you. They're they're mm -hmm. located at um, different training centers. There are private testing centers that are, that are located around um, Pearson view runs some test centers and yep. then um, community colleges, library systems for different counties will run that also military installations uh, literally around the world for service members that are deployed overseas can also test nice. um, there at those. So on test day though, um, you know, I tell folks, you know, just go in there and uh, um, you know, put your best foot forward. You've prepared for this. You're ready to go. Love it. Uh, so in considering taking a boot camp for certification exam study, Tommy, what advice or evidence can you give to listeners who are wondering uh, if this is their best option? Kind of like what I said earlier, a lot of folks fool themselves and say, oh, I, I, can, I can study for my, so this on my own. I don't, I don't have to get anybody's help. I can do this. Like, you know, it, you can. A lot of folks attempt and come up short. Um you know, if you have experience in the field already, um, it, it can be beneficial to learn the vocabulary, the styles of questions that we've got, and learning the CompTIA way of doing this. Um, if you're doing this on your own, um, it commits you, when you're going to do a boot camp, it commits you to this time of like, okay, here's the time that I, 
you know, I've got skin in the game now. It's not like, oh, I'll get around to doing this whenever I can. I'm going to put right, the, right. the book on next on the nightstand. I'll read this before I go to bed each night. And then yeah. you end up five pages keep. a night. It, it'll, it'll take me only 275 days. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. It, it's it, you know, a lot of folks. It just doesn't happen for them. Yeah. So it locks you in. Um, you know, I have a structure that we go through. We do this, all of our instructors, it's, it's structured. We have a way to do it. It's a method to it. We have the success numbers to prove <laughs> the method works. Ooh. So we'll get you through it. Beautiful. Tommy Gober, thank you for this entertaining tour through your Security Plus boot camp. I'm, 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 I'm thrilled we got to talk today. Absolutely. Thanks. And uh, thank you all for watching this episode. If you enjoyed this video and felt it helped you, please share it with your colleagues, forums, and other social media accounts. And definitely subscribe to our podcast feed uh, or our YouTube page. You can just type in CyberWork InfoSec into any of them, and you'll be well on your way. Uh, there's plenty more to come, including one more uh, uh, Security Plus uh, episode with Tommy. Uh, so if you have any topics that you want us to cover, please drop them in the comments below, and we do read those comments. Uh, until then, see you next time, and happy learning. See you, Chris. See you. Hey, if you're worried about choosing the right cybersecurity career, click here to see the 12 most in-demand cybersecurity roles. I ask experts working in the field how to get hired and how to do the work of these security roles so you can choose your study with confidence. I'll see you there.